guys and welcome back to Eden's Angora. I'm here today to cover a very important beginner topic. It can be an overwhelming one and for me a vulnerable one as well. So please understand as I'm showing you these different holds. This is my experience. I wouldn't do anything to hurt my rabbit but rather these secure holds ensure their safety as especially when we're using our clippers they could easily get cut and no one wants that to happen. So some of these holds may seem a little extreme to some, but they ensure our precious rabbit's safety. And they'll help you with more difficult rabbits and younger rabbits that still need to be trained to be handled. And yes, difficult and younger rabbits can still be trained to be awesome, good citizens later on in life for grooming. So I have with me today, Lightning McQueen. Look at that stud. He's the sire of my second most recent litter. Um, he is a black Vienna marked German Angora with marbled eyes and heavy, heavy facial furnishings that make him look like an English, don't they? Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's get right into the different holds. Um, the first one is one that we practice a lot and that is the baby hold or the football hold. And this hold just involves cradling your rabbit like so. And honestly, it's not good for much. <laughs> it's kind of just a good way to get them used to being held on their back. But I mean, I can't really get to anything. So we're gonna have to move on pretty quickly to the football hold. And this involves tucking your rabbit's ears underneath your armpit slightly and maybe even putting this hand underneath their front leg so that we can reach this area of their stomach. Sorry. So that we can reach their stomach and the bottoms of their feet if they will allow us to without kicking. Um, this is a good hold for, for just basic grooming, especially on the flank, the side of the rabbit's um, thighs. You can swivel them quite easily manipulating them like this in order to um, brush out this area. Now this next one is a very common hold and that is tucking our rabbit's ears between our knees and you're not pinching but holding slightly. It gives you a little bit of an advantage here um, because they can remove their ears from your knees quite easily because we're not pinching but it gives you a split second to kind of readjust if they're going to take off or anything like that. Now, this is my favorite bib hold. So you can fold down the front legs and hold them down and really easily comb out this bib and really see the entire area that you're working. Like so, you can see I have a clear working area. Now, if I have a difficult rabbit, I will have a towel underneath them and wrap that towel up and over these back legs and just have a bunch of towel right here that will protect me if they do decide to kick and flail. While we're on the topic of difficult rabbits and difficult rabbit holds, let's take it one step further. Say this is just not working for you. You can't get what you need to get done, done. Okay, it's all right. Now I'm gonna take you to a little more of an extreme hold. Um, this is my own creation to my knowledge. I call it the cavern hold. <laughs> and what that is, is you just drop your rabbit down one step further, cross your legs underneath them. Let me show you this. See how my legs are crossed right here? So he can't fall down too far. He's such a good boy for this, huh? Okay, and then I'm gonna hold his shoulders in my knees, okay? Shoulders instead of ears. This really gives us a good, clear area to work his bottom. Now, if your rabbit still won't let you brush out this area, which is extremely important, or won't let you clip it, and especially with a male rabbit, like Lightning here, we need to be very careful with our investment. Um, being his testicles, so 
when I'm clipping a difficult male rabbit, I will put my thumb underneath their hock and grab it, okay? So, let me try to show you this angle here. If you're grabbing their feet, they can kick and get away from you. If you hook your hand underneath their hock, there's not a lot that they can do. And then you can just be free to comb out this area or clip it or whatever you need to do here. Now, let me take Lightning up. He's such a good boy. He's not a rabbit that I've ever had to use this hold with before. So he's like, what is going on here? Usually, if you have to use this this hold with a rabbit, they know. They know what's going on. They know they're being bad. <laughs> so, um, one word of caution. When you are having a rabbit in any hold where their head is below their feet or their lungs are below their feet, don't have them in that hold for any more than five minutes. I don't even know if you can see my face. <laughs> so difficult. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to switch to the baby hold or the football hold, a different hold for a little while to give them a break. You don't want their lungs below their feet for any more than five minutes at a time. Then of course there's just the basic hold on your lap, right? And that's a great one. If they get shy, you can kind of tuck them into your armpit. Um, I like doing that when I'm combing out their skirt. My favorite method for combing out the skirt is to tuck their head in my armpit, make them feel nice and secure, and then comb out this skirt layer by layer. See how this hand is holding up the wool and it'll just slide back slowly, letting the layers fall. And that's a really nice way to thoroughly groom their hind end from the top. I hope this video was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please no criticism on this video. It, um, everyone has their own methods, but we're all trying our best. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more helpful tips on grooming and raising Angora rabbits and all things fiber arts, please consider following us. We'd really appreciate have it. Have a great day, guys. Bye.